Hi, I'm Perry West, President and Founder of Automated Vision Systems. In the last video, you learned what light is. In this video, you're going to learn three important properties of light. Color, coherence, and polarization because these three properties are very important to you when you work in machine vision. So let's get started. When we talk about color as a property of light, what are we really saying? Well, a strict definition of color would limit us to talking about only those wavelengths of light that are visible to the human. But we want to expand our conversation to talk about infrared and ultraviolet. Also, we're not going to talk about just a single wavelength, but the range of wavelengths that might be represented by some light. For example, here's a spectrum of sunlight as it reaches the Earth. You'll notice that it contains ultraviolet energy, which is what gives us the sunburn, visible energy we use to see, and infrared energy, which is the heat we feel. You might also notice that certain wavelengths are suppressed or absent. This is due to absorption of those wavelengths by water vapor in the atmosphere. Another example shown here is the spectrum for a fluorescent light. Again, the fluorescent light is a broad spectrum, but it has several strong peaks. These strong peaks give it a different nature or color. When we wear a shirt outdoors in the sunlight, the shirt appears to be one color. But when we bring it indoors under fluorescent light, the color of the shirt will appear to be different. It's not actually the shirt that changes, but the color or spectrum of wavelengths of the light that changes. Here's another example of a spectrum or range of wavelengths. This one is a narrow band range, such as might be given off by a red LED. We find that this kind of illumination is very useful in machine vision, but that's a topic for a later section. And if we move even to, say, a laser, we have a very, very tight group of wavelengths, almost monochromatic, that is one wavelength only, but there's a little bit of width to it. Just to recap then, color for our purposes is the range of wavelengths in the light that you are using in your vision system. The discussion of a narrow spectrum brings us to our next topic in the property of light, coherence. Coherence is a measurement of the sameness or purity of light. In theory, light can be pure. In practice, it only approaches being pure. And light can be pure in time or in space. We'll start first with time or temporal coherence. And temporal coherence is a measurement of the sameness of the wavelength or frequency of light. If light is perfectly temporally coherent, then no matter where we measure it or when we measure it, we will find exactly the same wavelength of light. A laser emits light with a small range of frequencies. It has very good, although not perfect, temporal coherence. A light source, like a light-emitting diode, produces a broader spectrum, but there is still some temporal coherence. White light sources have such a wide range of frequencies that there is no temporal coherence. Spatial coherence is about the sameness of light over space. Or put another way, it's how well the wavefront of light is preserved as it propagates. Light that is spatially coherent appears to have wavefronts emanating from a single point source. A plane wave is a light source emitted by a point that appears to be at infinity. Light that is spatially incoherent seems to be coming from many directions at the same time. For most light sources, this is the common condition. In the last video on what light is, we talked about light as electromagnetic energy, that it has a direction of travel, and that it has an electric field and a magnetic field that are at right angles to that direction of travel. Well, polarization is a statement about the orientation of the electric and magnetic fields, or more specifically, just the electric field that we normally talk about. Now, you might think that some light just has one orientation for the electric field, and that would be true 
in general if you were talking about a single photon. But when you're talking about light made up of many photons, we're going to see that that's not necessarily the case. Most common light energy consists of many waves, each with their own orientation. Therefore, ordinary light energy, such as from the sun or a household lamp, has waves oriented in all directions simultaneously. It is unpolarized. With an optical component called a linear polarizer, we can eliminate all the light's electromagnetic energy except that energy with its wave oriented in the polarizer's specific direction. So how much unpolarized light energy would you expect to pass through a polarizer? Logically, you might say, almost none, since only an infinitesimal fraction of the incident unpolarized light energy will have exactly the same preferred polarization as the polarizer. Well, let's test this with an experiment. For this demonstration, we're going to use an LED spotlight with its light falling on a witness plate so we can observe what's happening. We're also going to use a piece of polarizing material. This is a linearly polarized material so that light passing through it has to have its polar plane of polarization or its electric field oriented in a certain direction. Let's dim the lights and see what's going to happen. Now you can see the LED light falling on the witness plate. So let's put the linear polarizer in place and see what happens. We put it in place and the light intensity drops to about half of what it was originally. That should raise some questions in your mind. Now if I rotate it, you'll see that there's no change in the light intensity. So that at least verifies that the light coming out of the spotlight was unpolarized to begin with. Now I've mounted a second polarizer onto a stand here and I can rotate it in place and let's just verify that these polarizers are in fact operating correctly. So if I put my polarizer I'm holding by hand in the path you can see that in one orientation it blocks the light completely. However if I rotate it then both polarizers are passing the same light polarization or orientation of the electric vector and we get about half intensity again. If I continue to rotate it, then the two polarizers are oriented at right angles to each other and none of the light gets through. Maybe this experiment has you thinking. You could understand how the light could get through the two polarizers if they're aligned in the same direction. But what if their angle is a bit different? How does any light get through at all? Well, let's look into this. Suppose you have two light waves, the same frequency, the same phase, traveling in the same direction, but they're rotated 90 degrees from each other as shown in this illustration. What happens? Well, the two waves add, and the result is that what you would detect is a third wave. So if you have waves A1 and A2, they're going to add, like vector addition, to form wave B. We can take this idea of vector addition and reverse it, so that we now have a decomposition of the waves. So looking at this illustration, let's suppose that we have a wave A. We can actually say that it is composed of two waves added together, B1 and B2. Now if we were to take a polarizer and align it so that the axis of polarization is in the direction of B1, if A is in the B1 direction exclusively, then all of its light will pass through. As we rotate A around, the light through will get lower and lower until finally when the direction A is at uh, direction B2, none of the light will get through the polarizer. You have learned the three principal properties of light. Spectrum, coherence, and polarization. Spectrum is the range of wavelengths that exist within the light energy. Coherence is the sameness or purity of light. Light can be coherent in time, temporal coherence, having the same wavelength, or it can be spatially coherent, coming from the same point. 
and finally polarization, the orientation of light's electromagnetic field. Now you're ready for the third video in the series on how light interacts with material.